Hello everyone, it's Helen at Journaling Planet and today I'm going to show you how to make an NFL advent calendar for anyone in your life that might be an American football fan. If you're in the UK, you could adapt it to soccer. If you wanted to make a journal instead of making an advent calendar, you could also do that because you could just use the same structure and add a signature rather than add treats and things for them to open. Before I get started on the process video, I just wanted to show you some of the little treats that I'm putting in because I think it does get a bit difficult sometimes to think what 2D items can I put into this advent calendar that's actually going to, you know, not bulk things up too much, uh, but it's still going to be sort of an interesting prize for the person opening the envelope. So one of the things that I obviously went with was stickers. Uh, this is Waddle, who is a Miami Dolphins player and the person I'm making this for loves the Miami Dolphins in case you couldn't guess by some of the other things on the table here. So stickers, yes. I found these old collector's cards in a place called the Antique Mall in Edmonton, Canada when I was on a trip there and it is the most wonderful place I've ever visited. If you are ever in Edmonton, Canada, please go to the Antique Mall. It is amazing and I found these packs of these cards and I'm going to be putting a few of those in. They're not in date, they're old vintage cards, but I think if you're a real fan of the sport, it doesn't really matter, does it, whether it's modern or vintage. In fact, the vintage might have more appeal. The other thing I put in were pin badges. A bit of a glare there on the light, sorry about that. But yeah, a pin badge, I don't think that's even going to focus, is it? Um, oh, just about. <laughs> you can just about see what it says. So I went for Miami Dolphins themed pin badges. And the other thing... That I'm putting here is I'm putting some chocolate in. I really wanted to put some chocolate in because that's traditional advent calendar style. But I live in the UK and could I find anything with like NFL or an American football on it? You know, I was look looking for a, a piece of chocolate that sort of looked like this in 2D form. No, all I could find was rugby balls, which are not quite the same thing. And the person that I'm giving this to is quite the connoisseur and probably know the difference. So in the end, I managed to find some um, 2D-ish um chocolate dolphins and so I've littered a few of those around the 25 envelopes because the person that I'm making this for also really likes chocolate so I did want to include that but I think it was quite a good realization sort of part way through my process when I was really frustrated I couldn't find anything where I live um, that was you know American football themed because I was in the UK and think all right what what's the actual theme? All right, it is American football, but it's also Miami Dolphins. So let me see if I can find some dolphins. So if you are making this for another team, say it's a hockey team, say it's a, um, a soccer team, say it's a basketball team, if they've got a mascot or if they've got a team name, you can kind of drill down into that as well and use it as a motif in the advent calendar or the journal. If I thought that through at the very beginning... <laughs> I could have saved myself a heck of a lot of Googling. All right, so I just wanted to show you some of the treats that I'm going to put into this advent calendar. And I'm going to go straight into the process video now, which I have sped up because it was quite lengthy. And otherwise, you are going to be here for the rest of time. The reason I had to speed it up is that I did make a few mistakes along the way. And I kept those in because if you make this, then I want you to actually avoid the mistakes I did. I mean, some of them were so stupid, folks, that to be honest, you would probably never make them. All right. I don't know what was wrong with me the day that I started this project, but I just, I just didn't quite do anything quite right. Uh, and we all have those days. So I thought it would also be nice for you to see that, hey, we all have those days and they can be fixed, these errors, and you can still create something really cool for the person that you care about. So without further ado, Onto the process video where there'll be a voiceover explaining all the details of how I put together this NFL advent calendar. Enjoy. So something that I should mention right from the get go is that I got this idea from treasure books like so many other ideas in my junk journaling. She's such a fantastic presenter is Natasha and she did a tutorial a while back now about making a generic advent calendar and in that video she talked about how in terms of binding, you could just do a no sew binding and wrap some cord around the spine and put in the signatures that way. I'll show you how I do that later. That's exactly what I did. As I said in the introduction, you could make an advent calendar. You could also make a regular journal. I'm essentially doing that by making this calendar because I do put a signature into this book. It's just that I only put three sheets of paper in it because 
that's how much I can actually cope with in terms of the binding. And um, it, otherwise, it's going to be too bulky with the number of treats that I'm putting in there with the envelopes. So that's something to bear in mind that essentially I am just making a journal here. It's a book form of an advent calendar. So there's nothing to stop you just making a journal if that's what you'd like to do. As you can see, I started with this hardback Disney book that had been gutted. I don't know what it is about the kids in my area, but none of them seem to want these Disney books anymore. Perhaps they're busy watching the films or watching TV shows. I don't know, but I keep finding them in charity shops for very low prices, prices that suggest that they're going to go to um, pulp or to the recycling anytime soon. So when I see them at that extremely discounted price, you know, less than a pound, I snap them up and I try and reuse them in my craft projects because they're such lovely things. So the in innards of this book have been pulled out and I have just got the bare board sitting here. And because it's an NFL journal, I decided that I was going to largely work with red, white and blue for the colours, uh, you know, the colours of the American flag. Here, I don't know what I was thinking. I cut down this piece of paper far too small to cover the area I needed to cover. And then you'll see in a moment, I have this moment of realisation of, oh, that's far too small. So instead, I just use uh, this piece of paper that has not been cut down. And I then have to go and find another piece of blue paper. This is what I was saying in my introduction in terms of doing things that you just like. Is this your first day in the craft room? I don't know what possessed me to cut that other piece of paper down so far. Anyway, I did manage to find another piece of blue paper. Mercifully, I did have a spare. And I just rounded the corners and stuck it into the inside cover just to cover up the last bit of the Disney stuff that was sitting there. I did try and keep the binding as straightforward as possible because I knew that essentially the more complicated that I made that, the longer this project was going to take ultimately. So I just tried to keep things really simple and I just washi taped around the spine. Later, I go in with some wet glue and really seal that washi tape in. But something you'll see me doing quite a bit in this project is that I just go for it and put some things down. And then later, if I need to go in with wet glue or I need to go with extra double sided tape, I'll do that later. What I want as I'm going through this project is to sort of do a little bit and then see how it looks and then do a little bit more and see how that looks. And essentially, don't make anything permanent until I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing and how it's turning out. So I do just use, for example, washi tape, a bit of glue stick to begin with. And then later, once I think, yep, that's definitely how I want it to look. It's definitely where I want it to sit. Then I go in with some wet glue and I also go in with some double sided tape in order to secure things a little bit um, better and make sure that it stays. Because the last thing I want when I'm giving this as a gift is that it falls apart on the recipient. That would be a little bit embarrassing <laughs> when you tell people it's handmade and they're thinking, gosh, um, yeah, you can tell. <laughs> That's not really what you want. Um, so I'm cutting up these white strips because I want to emulate the American flag. And I want there to be strips of red and white on the front. There's also going to be some blue paper added to get that red, white and blue theme going early on. And I just ultimately decide to wrap each of these strips around the edge of the book so that I don't have a kind of um, sharp edge or uneven edge on that front cover. It seemed the easiest way uh, to kind of hide the ends of that paper. And if something shows on the inside, I'm not too bothered about that. I'm more bothered about the front because that's the first impression that people are going to get of this advent calendar. So you could use literally any hardback book that has been gutted for this. You uh, could use a cereal box and reinforce it. Uh, you would probably need to reinforce it with a few layers because cereal box these, these days, they well, they don't make them how they used to, folks. Uh, they're a little bit flimsy. And you do need something that can take having cord wrapped around the end of it. So something to bear in mind. I was quite pleased with how that bit turned out the white and red stripes. I've managed to, for me, do these things pretty evenly. And then I decided that I wanted to create a sort of outline of an American football on the cover as well to really make it clear what the theme was. 
I had this brown paper and I thought it's actually just paper that you'd find in the end of a book. It's like bookend paper that got ripped out of some book that I was harvesting from. And it's nice matte quality. So I went in with a white acrylic marker and just uh, drew all that on. I didn't put all of the drawing on the video because I think it's fairly obvious that <laughs> I went in with the acrylic marker and, you know, I just added those details to the football. I didn't want this video to be too long and I think some things are self-explanatory. So, for example, the lettering on the front as well, it was just a matter of using a stencil with my white acrylic marker, cutting the pieces of paper with some craft scissors, gluing them on the front. So I didn't video every single last part of this because, as I say, it would have been a very long video. I just wanted to get the basic gist of what I was doing, especially given that Natasha's um, tutorial is up there. Uh, so if you want to go to hers as well and see what she did, I recommend doing that for sure. Uh, then you've got sort of two examples of how you can achieve this. Because I'm wanting to emulate the American flag, I did go ahead and punch out some stars to go on the inside in the hope that this would create a, a sort of an effect where you sort of saw some of the design of the American flag on the front cover and then you turn to the inside and there was sort of some more uh, kind of motif that emulated the American flag. So just continuing that theme through the book. I did add some washi tape around the edges of the inside of the book as well, uh, just to cover up some of the harsher lines and also make it a little bit glittery because this is a Christmas advent calendar at the end of the day. Um, I happen to have some gold cord in my stash, which I was very pleased about. I wrapped it around three times because I was going to have three pages, three removable pages. So that means that I can give this as a gift to the person this year. I can say it's fine for them to rip open the envelopes as much as they need to, to get at the prizes. And I can then remove the signatures after they're done and in some future year, probably not every single year, but at some future year, I can then present them with a new NFL advent calendar with some new treats inside. So I've got a sort of reusable foundation here. In order to create the signature, I did just measure this 12 by 12 paper against the main structure of the book and trimmed it down accordingly had to create a sort of hinge and add a bit of paper on because I actually found 12 by 12 one of the least helpful sizes. Uh, I'm sure that there is a craft where 12 by 12 is the perfect size for any project, but um, I personally don't think it's journaling. I would much rather that uh, the craft paper was A4 in size. That to me is the most useful size of paper. So I'll show you here how I create the hinge. I've got my first signature there. I'm just measuring where I folded and then I'm adding a little bit more um, craft card onto there. And I'm going to trim that down as well so that it meets the same size as the first piece of the signature that I made. And I think this worked out fine. Again, I would have preferred it if my paper was A4, but I'm a big believer in using what you've got in your stash. I had this Christmas paper that I've been gifted. I don't tend to buy 12 by 12 packs because as I say, I don't really find the size that helpful. Um, but I hinged it with some washi tape and I also wrapped some washi tape around the edge so that it was a little bit reinforced when it went into the binding there. I think that this actually does look very nice and I definitely needed to stick with just three pages because when I finish this, when I show you the finished result with all of the treats in there, you will see that it is so thick, so unbelievably thick. And really, if it had been any thicker than that, um, it wouldn't have been a workable, you know, advent calendar. It would have been very difficult to kind of open the pages. So three pages is definitely my max. I'll explain why it's so bulky at the end. So, you, you know, it's obvious which kind of treats work best and which ones are going to absolutely 100% bulk up your calendar if you use them. There's a reason why in traditional advent calendars, the chocolates in them are so small. Otherwise, you would end up with a really 
bulky, you know, bulky calendar, which is not what anybody wants. So one of the things about this Christmas 12 by 12 uh, kind of craft paper that I had was that it did have this page, which was very um, convenient, that had all numbers from 1 to 25, uh, you know, between the 1st of December and the 25th of December. And so I thought I would use those in the advent calendar to number the envelopes. You do not need this to make an advent calendar. You can add numbers in any way you choose. You could um, stamp them on. You could use stickers. You could cut numbers out of magazines or a newspaper. There are countless ways to add numbers to something. You could hand write them on. Nothing stopping you doing that. So uh, please don't think that you need these special things to make this. You can use whatever you've got in your stash. So I'm wrapping up here the first prize and it is a Ray Finkel sticker, which is a reference to the Ace Ventura film in which the Miami Dolphins feature. Some elements of that film have not aged brilliantly. However, um, I do think it is still quite funny in places. And I do think also that if you're a Miami Dolphins fan, you probably love the fact that the players, including Dan Marino, feature in that film. So I decided that I was going to create an envelope for this and do a, a proper envelope and then add the number one to the front. And I'm showing you the first few that I do. I do them all in this style where I sort of wrap the paper over the treat and then fold at the bottom, fold at the top, trim the excess and glue it all down. And I did this for the first three. And then it got to the point where I realized this was actually quite time consuming. And on top of that, it was bulking up the calendar because I was having to use quite a lot of card just to create the envelope. It was, you know, it was kind of the bulkiest way I could have chosen to make an envelope. <laughs> and the thing that I've just put in that envelope there, the chocolate dolphin, that's the thing that really bulked up this advent calendar. <laughs> and I suppose it's no big surprise because they're 2D-ish, but it's obvious that they, you know, they're not as flat as they could be. And so that definitely did create a much chunkier advent calendar. So that's something to beware of if you're wanting something much flatter than the one that I end up with. So as I say, I fold the card over the prize I then fold up from the bottom, fold up from the top and I trim the excess away. This is the way I did it. And it, it's nice, but it's time consuming and it does bulk up the journal more. I will show you, I only do three of these envelopes on screen because again, I don't want to kind of bore you and, you know, repeat the same thing over and over again. The video would be really long if I did all 25. So this is me showing you the last thing that I did, um, the last envelope. And I just got a piece of card, folded it in half, cut a flap at the top and secured the sides with washi. It's much less bulky than the way I did it in those first three. I did most of them this way. And you'll see as I'm sticking them in that a lot of them are just pieces of card folded in half, the sides secured with washi and a flap cut at the top. And because you're using less card, it is much less bulky. I just, for me, this was quicker. So I'm just gonna let you know that I found that easier and I found it quicker. The thing I will say about that is that if you've got something that is quite a bulky treat, which I do have those chocolate dolphins that are a bit bulkier, you may need to go in with some glue and reinforce the washi tape because I, as I'm flipping through this, you'll see I have to correct the washi tape a few times at the sides because essentially the treat that I put in there is just a bit too much for uh, you know the strength of that washi tape. So I definitely had to reinforce with glue in places. I'd recommend checking this before you hand it over as a gift. I did decide to round all the corners of the signature just because I think that looks a really nice. It makes it look sort of slightly more professional. And then it was just a matter of double-sided tape for all these envelopes in strategic places, uh, doing what I could to make the signatures lay flat despite the somewhat bulky prizes on some pages. I've been hoarding these stickers in my stash for goodness knows how long, probably about three years. I don't know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? And I thought those will do nicely to just stick on these envelopes as a little embellishment without me having to spend reams of time embellishing each envelope, you know, to the nth degree. At the end of the day, they're going to get ripped open. I want them to look nice, but I don't want to spend lots and lots of time 
embellishing something that is going to get ripped open. So just a little sticker on each one and particularly to cover up the seam um, on the signature where I had to add an extra bit of card to make it fit into the journal the way I wanted it. And I think that this method worked quite well. I'm going to check it in a few days and see whether that double sticky tape is holding. You might want to kind of be on the safe side and add some glue. The thing is, the only thing I worry about with wet glue is that it's going to seep through this card. I worry about it affecting the prizes inside, particularly the things that are uh, stickers or collector's cards. I just think if that gets wet, it's probably not going to look as good. It's possibly going to damage it. So I think if you add glue, it might have to be glue stick if you've got similar prizes in your advent calendar. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of thinking through in terms of adhesive, but hopefully this sticky tape will be enough. And when I go back through the calendar in a few days, it'll still be all together and looking smart. Uh, and I just maybe need to reinforce a couple of things with glue stick, if anything. The other thing that I didn't mention is that I did go around the uh, cover with Mod Podge front and back. I didn't do the insides, but I did do front and back just to kind of seal the washi tape that I'd used in a little bit and also to give it a slightly more finished look. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but when I had finished with the Mod Podge, I think it did look marginally better, marginally like a, you know, more like a, a sort of sealed in thing rather than just some bits of paper stuck to, um, you know, at the front of a book. So to me that worked. But when I put that Mod Podge on, the paper did bevel really badly. It kind of all wrinkled. So just to warn you that there may be a bit of an ugly phase if you try that because wet glue is going to wrinkle paper. But it did dry. Once it was dry, it was quite flat again. So I think it was just that moment of horror when I put it on. I was like, uh oh, was that the best move? <laughs> and uh, luckily it dried pretty flat once it was completely dry. So... That worked out for me, but I'm just warning you that there is a moment where you start to wonder, is the paper that I've used for this going to actually hold the Mod Podge or is the Mod Podge going to just completely wrinkle everything and make it look, you know, not so hot. So just something to bear in mind there. Once that I've done all these envelopes and I'm quite close to finishing them now, I did go through and just add a couple of embellishments on the pages where um, perhaps there's a bit of a gap. Perhaps I felt like only one envelope could go on that page because of the bulkiness of it or because I thought that, you know, it was going to essentially mean that there was nothing on the last page or there was too much on the last page. So I had to sort of portion out these envelopes and make sure that, you know, I was putting largely two to three on one page. But as you can see, there are some places where I put one. So do think through what envelopes you want to put on what page and so on this page here you can see I'm just creating a very small collage using some Christmas embellishments that have sat in my stash for quite some time and it does just jolly up the page a little bit on the whole though because I've used Christmas paper as the backing I do think that this was largely you know embellished well enough that I didn't have to do much to it so there is something to be said for using a backing paper for your signature or card in my case because it was too bulky to just use paper, it would have torn the signature, needed something sturdier than that. But there is something to be said for using paper or card that already is decorated or decorative in some way. I think it will save you a little bit of time in terms of embellishing, you know, the calendar as a whole if you've already got patterned paper that's pleasing to the eye. One thing that I forgot to mention in my introduction is that I did have one more prize for the advent calendar and that was the number 25 prize which is a key ring usually on advent calendars you get something a little bit special in the 25 envelope or a 25 window and i'd already done stickers and collector's cards and chocolate and pin badges and i was like what else could i do in that 25 envelope and i thought a keychain might be quite 2d and Duly, I was able to find one that fit the envelope nicely. I did also put a few bonus stickers in that envelope as well. So I just decided to, you know, make 25 a little bit of a special envelope, put something different in there and also put a few extras because that's the one that this person's going to be opening on Christmas Day. 
So it is nice to think about that and maybe think about how you're portioning up the prizes that you make. I hope that you like this project and that it's been useful to watch me kind of create this from a Disney hardback. <laughs> you know, it is quite thick when it's finished, but I think it looks cute. At the end of the day, it is a handmade project, but all of the prizes in there, I think, are things that people who like football would enjoy. And it's something different to give that person. You know, guys can be particularly difficult to um, shop for. And there are lots of women out there who like NFL. Um, but if you have got a guy in your life, uh, be it a co-worker, be it a romantic partner, a brother, a nephew, whoever it might be, and you do find them quite difficult to shop for, something like this, uh, making an advent calendar on the theme of their favourite sport, might be a lovely uh, either addition to their Christmas present or a lovely Christmas present full stop. Certainly the person that I'm giving this to, I will say to them, this is part of your Christmas present because it did take me a long time to make. And I think that it's, you know, something a bit special, something a bit different. And I think it is present worthy, if you see what I'm saying. So I really hope this has been helpful. If you've enjoyed this video or found it entertaining, then please give it a thumbs up. Please also leave a comment below about whether or not you're going to try this project and any other ideas you have for any of the advent calendars that could be made or um, journals, of course, because essentially you could just make this as a journal. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. It helps people who have not found my channel yet find my channel. So thank you so much for watching. There'll be another video along soon. Until then, happy crafting, and I will see you next time.